Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel and welcome to part 5 of our landslide susceptibility mapping series. In the past episode, we explored elevation, slope, aspect, and curvature. Today, we are focusing on LS factor, a combined measurement of slope length and slope steepness. This factor is very crucial in estimating soil erosion rate, which can significantly impact landslide susceptibility. In this episode, we will guide you through calculating a list factor using ArcGIS Pro and discuss how it integrates into our overall landslide risk analysis. If you are enjoying this series, be sure to like, subscribe, and leave your comment below. Let's get started. Before we deep dive into the practical aspect, let me explain some important key points here. To calculate LS factor, that means slope length and slope stiffness, we need to have the following at least six steps. The first step is if you do have larger data set at a national level and if you are working on a small area of interest, you are expected to prepare your digital elevation model by extract by mask and uh, we need to uh, manage or we need to feel and think to correct our data elevation model if there is any artificial uh, feature which is found or which distort the elevation of a certain geographic area we need to feel and think the third step is we need to have a flow direction as you know flow direction is highly dependent on the topographic structure of an area so we need to have a flow direction. Uh, the direction is always expressed in terms of uh, cardinal points or subsidiary points. Uh, so we have uh, four uh, main direction, north, south, east, and west. Within, such, within the uh, branch, there are uh, different subsidiary points. The other is a flow accumulation. Flow accumulation is related to the accumulation of sediment and water bodies in low-laying areas. So we need to calculate a flow accumulation. The fifth step is slope. As you know, slope is the inclination of a certain place and it is always indicated or expressed by a degree or uh, percent raise. And finally, we compute a less factor by using this formula. The formula is power of uh, flow accumulation times uh, spatial resolution of our digital elevation model over this constant number, the power of 0 0.4 times power of sine slope. The slope is uh, calculated in terms of degree and this is a constant number and we divide by this constant number, the power of 1.4 times 1.4. This is a formula to compute a list factor. So, uh, the first and the second step is computed in the, in the previous video and you can have a look and revise and automatically we will continue from uh, calculating flow direction to uh, the LS factor. So, the first step that we are going to do is we need to uh, have the digital elevation model based on our area of interest. I have uh, this digital elevation model and I have also performed uh, field the digital elevation model to avoid uh, some kinds of error and the third step is we need to have the flow direction of uh, this digital elevation model to perform that. Let's go to analysis and you can click uh, this toolbox and within the available options of toolbox, we scroll down to spatial analysis tool and from spatial analysis tool, there are ample amount of options that I'm very much interested to use hydrology. From available hydrology, uh, we need to use a flow direction tool. So uh, I will click here. As you know, uh, to complete a flow direction, we need to have input surface raster is a disalivation model that we filled in the previous uh, video. So uh, I would like to select the disalivation model that is filled. So the output flow direction raster should be put in our working directory. In our case, I have my working directory and I will uh, give a name as 
flow direction or uh, simply we call it FDR this is a flow direction as far as the flow direction is concerned as you know flow direction is the direction in which water will travel from each cell in a digital elevation model based on the steepest uh, descendant to the neighbor of the cell and uh, the most important uh, point that we uh, should consider here is the flow direction type there are different types of uh, a flow direction type the first one is d8 method or de deterministic gate direction the most commonly used method where each cell in the digital elevation model has uh, eight possible flow direction uh, there is up down left right and diagonal the flow is assigned to uh, the direction of the steepest descent to the adjacent cell so based on the elevation of uh, an area and the slope of uh, the map, water is flow from one cell to uh, another. So uh, I prefer the D8 or the deterministic aid method. The next one is flow accumulation. Flow accumulation is a key concept in hydrological analysis, particularly in GIS. It refers to the amount of water that accumulate at a given point on the landscape as water flow across the terrain. So to compute the flow accumulation, let's get back to the main uh, toolbox. And there is flow accumulation. I'll click here. In this case, the input flow direction is an input. So uh, flow direction is input parameter. Let's give a name for our output. Let's call it flow accumulation save it and uh, the input flow direction type is uh, deterministicate then execute this is the flow accumulation that we have and the next step is we need to compute the slope so let's get back to the main two sets from the available uh, two sets which is found in spatial analysis let us scroll down to surface and uh, from surface, we need to uh, have slope. Double click on the slope. The input raster data to compute slope is uh, the desalivation model that we uh, use. Uh, the output raster is let's uh, give a name as a slope in degree and save it. And the most important point that we uh, should consider here is that slope is expressed in terms of percent raise in degree. I prefer to use a degree. Then run. Automatically, we will have the uh, slope map of our steady area. This is uh, my slope map of uh, our steady area. Then, uh, let's get back to the formula. Now I do have a flow direction, flow accumulation and slope, and finally we are expected to calculate slope length and slope steepness factor based on the available intermediate outputs. So uh, let's have this formula, and to compute this uh, LS factor, we need to use a raster calculator in map algebra with a spatial analysis tool. Let's get back to the main uh, toolbox. Scroll up to map algebra. For map algebra, there is raster calculator. Then uh, let's take the formula. This is power is found here. You can write power flow accumulation is is uh, flow accumulation. Then you can substitute this by uh, the flow accumulation. And the spatial resolution of my digital elevation model is 20 meter. So uh, 20 over the constant number. Then uh, power, seat time. This slope should be uh, replaced by this double click and slope in degree times the constant number over this constant number, the power of 1.4 times 1.4. So this is a general formula that we uh, expect to use to compute a list factor. And finally, we need to save our output in uh, my working directory as ls factor. ls factor. 
can save it and hit run. This is a list factor map and you can uh, visualize based on your color scheme. So to perform that, right click here, go to symbology, from symbology there are different color scheme based on your color preference. You can select and visualize your output. Uh, then let's uh, take this one. So uh, this indicates that the LS factor, the green one, have uh, the lower LS factor, whereas uh, this red uh, one indicates higher LS factor. So based on our threshold to compute our land susceptibility or land flight susceptibility map, we need to reclassify it as usual. Then let's get back to our Excel data to reclassify our raster data based on our uh, classes. So the LS factor is uh, from 0 to 10 is very low. That means the raster data which is lay between 0 and 10 is very low susceptible to landslide, whereas greater than 40 is very high susceptible for landslide. So based on this threshold, we need to classify our data set into 5. So 10, 20, 30, and 40 are the our uh, upper maximum uh, limit. So uh, go to your processing and from your processing we use reclassify. So you can write here reclassify or you can collapse the map algebra and uh, scroll down to reclass. From reclassify uh, click on reclassify from reclass there is reclassify. Input raster data is the LS factor we generate from the digital elevation model and the reclass field is the value. Then let's reclassify into five category. The minimum uh, number is 10. Then here we have 20, 30, Thirty, forty, and greater than forty. So between zero and ten is very low susceptible. Ten to twenty is low. Twenty to thirty is uh, medium or moderate. Thirty to forty is very high susceptible for landslide. LS factor that is greater than 40 or from 40 to 2,424 is very high susceptible. And finally, let's get back to our working directory to save our output. So uh, we call it LS reclass. Reclass. Save it and let's execute. Finally, we uh, have the LS factor. You can visualize again by uh, considering your best color scheme for better visualization and interpretation purpose. So uh, right click on the raster data, go to symbology and select your color. The color with deep uh, blue is uh, highly susceptible whereas the red one is indicated as low land slice susceptible based on LS factor. This is all about today's video. If you, wanna, if, you, if you have any question or suggestion, don't hesitate and put your uh, suggestion on your comment box.